Hi, I'm Sharanjeet Banga and I'm an activist, author and Sikh storyteller. Hi, I'm Sonia Gore. I am an author and the marketing director for Gore's Reimagine, a new story project launching this summer. Hi, I'm Krishma Arvora, and I am an author, a poet, and a high school teacher. Yeah, so as you mentioned in your profile that you're someone who uh, embraces the concept of hope and challenges uh, societal norms around. Right. So can you share any specific instances where this balance has been particularly challenging or even particularly mm -hmm. I think it's challenging just in day-to-day -day life. So in my story, um, in Course Reimagine, the story that I've written, The Soul Walk to Sovereignty, it talks a lot about how I wanted to show up in the world, who I wanted to be, and there were challenges just daily. I mean, I think a lot of it talked about me in my early 20s trying to figure out my identity and who I was sharing knowledge and experiences extends on the lines of parenting to various movements, including written and video content and whatnot. Um, how do you leverage these platforms to express yourself creatively and connect with your audience but that you need to cater to our people? I think it's such a blessing that we have so many platforms that we can share our stories on. Um, whether it's video in a content creation style, or now as an author of a story in an upcoming book, both give me different avenues of expressing myself. One more, you know, to grab people's attention, to make them feel seen and related to. And then through writing Four Gores Reimagine really allowed me to dig deeper, um, share actual examples from my life and go more personal than I would on any other platform. And with the support of other authors and editors and knowing what challenges other women are sharing and how deeply personal their stories are and they're not afraid to put them out there, it gives you the courage then to be more open and to share more because anything we share is only going to help another person. Amazing, yeah. Um, I also wanted to kind of see uh, for you how your uh, experiences not only informed your work, but also did your work, uh, while uh, kind of progressing your book, help you introspect on those experiences and kind of grow and look at them in a different manner? Absolutely. Um, when I began writing my novel, I was 24 years old. Um, you know, I was married at 21, which is, you know, barely almost like a child woman. And when I finally finished writing the book over the years, um, I finished the ending when I was 40 years old. So in between all those years, I had grown as a woman. Um, I had embraced motherhood. I had gone back for education and in my career as a teacher. Um, so I, as a woman, evolved, but so did my character in my story. Um, in From Ash to Ashes, which is the name of my novel, my protagonist, Mira, uh, Mira Singh, you, you see her um, as an 18-year-old girl um, who is trying to overcome the challenges presented in her life. But at the end of the novel, she's a grown woman, she's a mother, and how she comes into her own and how she recognizes that she herself is the main character of her story and she writes the narrative, that, that realization came from my own life and, and it went into my character. So the character and I almost became simultaneous and one. So absolutely. That's amazing. That evolution is you know, something that can only happen when you start an experience. Um, so my question for all three of you guys, if you go down the line again, is I'm sure people have been asking you all day, how does Sikhi uh, and sick ethos and experiences inform your work and what you put into your work? But I kind of want to flip the question a little bit and ask, um, how do you feel your work and what you're putting out there is contributing to the overall kind of sick conscience and diaspora. So how is it helping you grow on a personal level, on an artistic level, and on a general funding level? For me, writing was very healing. Um, a lot of what I was writing about were things that I'd gone through over the last decade. And I use Sikhi ideologies to help get me through that. So 
I, I did mention hookum as being something very special and something that I had only learned over time. So in my early 20s, I didn't understand or else I also thought so much about why is this happening to me? But now in my mid 30s, I understand that you have to go through a plethora of challenges to ultimately get to like where I am now. And so it's like that caterpillar phase. That's what I felt like I was in in my 20s in this little cocoon. And as I continued to grow throughout my 20s and my 30s, I really understood like, what does it mean to be a sovereign sick woman? What does it mean to show up for myself? What does it mean to have confidence? Um, and so it was pure like sicky ideologies and like what it is to be a sick woman that helped me get to the place that I am today. And it also helped me write the novel as well or write the story within the novel. Um, for me, I think when I first started on this path of sharing, it was almost from a selfish standpoint. I thought it was just about me and my experiences and my sharing. Um, and it gave me that creative outlet, outlet. But the more I shared, the more I realized that really I was connecting with my father. Um, he used to do kata gurdwaras in the beginning and end of his life. And I realized at one point I shared something about Sikhi. And I got this rush, and it wasn't like the rush of getting likes on social media. It was realizing that I was connecting to him. I was furthering what he had done in a completely different way um, than he did. He went to Gurdwaras, he spoke to six, but I felt that I had the opportunity, not in the same way he did, but in the same vein to just play off of what he taught me and the knowledge he shared and realizing that it was about more than just myself. So I think there was a lot of growth there. I, um, I'd have to say that Sikhi for me is not just, you know, the religion of my parents and grandparents and what I was brought up with. Um, Sikhi is my everything. And I don't just mean the physical sense of Sikhi. For me, um, Sikhi is more spiritual than anything else. And um, that Sikh spirit is in my novel, it's in my character, it's in her experience through every hardship that she faces. And I think that, you know, the sick faith, the love um, between God divine and ourselves, the universal soul and the individual soul, um, that connection, I think is what has helped me in my personal tragedies in my life to get through them to I wouldn't say overcome them, but you know, the way you had talked about healing in the same way to help me heal. And um, so I look to my faith for everything and in with my character and my novel with Mira, so does she. Um, in every aspect of her life, she remembers her faith and um, it guides her throughout all the decisions she makes and it guides her through temptation, it guides her through um, sorrow and in the end um, she you know she surrenders to her faith and, um, and, and so so do I. Uh, that, all three of you, that was really insightful. Uh, really quickly you go to one and just tell us what you're working on right now what you have uh, kind of on the horizon what was capturing your attention right now. I'm working on promoting and marketing of course the Core's uh, Reimagine book, and so that's probably one of my biggest things. Um, I do want to host a book circle, so I'm originally from the Bay Area in California, but I live in Austin, Texas now, and I would love to have women from all walks of life come together, whether or not they've read the, the story or not, whether or not they've read Core's Reimagine or not. Just come and, you know, like have a safe space for us to talk about anything that's on women's minds. And so I would love to do that in conjunction with the Cores Reimagined book. Um, for me, it's really right now, my focus is taking these stories that these women have completed, pour their hearts into, and as the marketing director, just making sure it reaches as many people as possible. Um, and really thinking of every avenue we can use to promote this book that we really feel would be so beneficial for every age and every cultural background to really read and understand. So that's my focus right now. 
Um, I uh, have taken a little break from teaching uh, currently at this moment because I also have four kids, the youngest being two and a half. So life is a, is a full plate at the moment. Um, but I am looking um, to market my novel, which was published um, last May and um, get it out there. And uh, cause I know it will resonate with so many more people. Um, and also I started um, really writing more poetry. Like I used to, when I was younger, I'm putting together a poetry collection. I do a lot of spoken word poetry on my Instagram. And I also write, started writing a second novel, which is supposed to be, uh, supposed to take place in the year 2100, in the future. And it, uh, I don't wanna give away too much, but it has something to do with climate change and, and how it's going to affect all of us, so. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you guys so much for your uh, giving us a little insight into your process and really are all three of inspiration to all of us here at Shkong TV. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please subscribe, share, and like this video to support us.